Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for More. It's uh, Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to introduce you to Loopy Pro. What a fantastic application. Uh, before I start, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe unless you have already done so, as that helps with um, growing the channel, bringing more tutorials, videos, giveaways, etc, etc. So I pondered if to create a long video for Loopy Pro or if indeed to create a number of tutorials in a series and I have decided on the latter because there is so much that um, uh, we need to go through in order to learn how to use Loopy Pro properly. And it is the type of application with, where it will continue to improve, more functionalities will be added in and there is a roadmap which is constantly being developed so i think it makes sense to go for a series of tutorials in this first tutorial i'd like to introduce you to what it does the interface so that you get accustomed with the basic as we start with the recording of uh, loops which are included in clips etc etc so the first thing to notice is when you launch uh, Loopy Pro, you have these 10 uh, circles in the middle of the screens, which represent, uh, each one represent a loop or uh, a clip, which contains some audio data, which can be recorded, can be imported, can be manipulated, etc. etc. You also see that there are different colors. You see orange colors, yellow colors, etc., etc. And colors are the way to designate tracks and also different configuration in uh, Loopy Pro. By that, I mean that you can uh, create change settings at a global level or for all clips, or you can uh, change or override some of those settings at colors level. The four clips which have the same colors behave uh, uh, according to the settings for that color, unless there's no um, overriding and therefore they will take the settings from the global configuration. And you can also override the color setting, changing configuration and settings at clip level, which I will show you in a specific tutorial. Okay, so that bear in mind because that is quite important. Sometimes you you forget about that as you go deeper into the complexity of a project and you find yourself that uh, you don't understand why a clip is behaving a certain way and that might be because there are specific uh, settings on the clip or they are related to the colors or they are indeed taken from the global settings okay let's start from the top left you have a folder here let's click on it so this is where you can change the name of your project, like so. Click on the pencil and then change the name. You can create a new project and it will ask if you want to discard the changes, save the changes, etc. You can save the project, duplicate one and also export it. Down at the bottom here you have free selection. The first one is project. You find always this audio uni extension folder, which it comes very handy. But in this case, particularly for these, uh, for projects in general, you have the sample projects folder, which is really nice. It gives you some uh, sample um, of project, which are really great, which gives you, you can use to learn how to use Loopy Pro. And um, the interface you see for the folders are very much, um, each interface is similar. So you have an edit button, where you can select items, move them and delete them. And you have also the possibility to sort by name and sort by date. So that will be true if you go back, for example, for your recording. So similar interface, this is where you find your recording because indeed you can record audio or um, performance as well inside um, Loopy Pro. And additionally, you have access to a media as well uh, bay and this is where you can select uh, for example clipboard if you copied for example audio from another application you can actually uh, select something using document picker so you go directly to the file management of your ios device or you can go inside your music library within ios if you have something recorded 
there. And just remember that uh, Loopy Pro has also support for uh, uh, drag and drop as well, which works um, extremely well. So let's close that because I've already created uh, a new project. Something else I wanted also to remind you to make you aware straight away is that when you create a new project, it um, um, override or reset the settings at color level, which you find here, but not all the global settings at clip level. So if you have to reset those, simply go to clip settings, go right to the bottom where it says restore default and then click on it. As you can see, there are lots of options that we need to go through. This is just the clip settings. Of course, some of the settings are repeated between the different levels, as I was explaining a moment ago. So whether you can set uh, a number of settings, uh, clip level, color level, or actually clip level itself. So, but we'll see those in the next tutorial. You can click close, or you can click outside the particular uh, view, and you go back to the main screen but let's proceed so you have undo or redo option you have a play button and these will you will see it will change also in the ability to continue to play linearly or to play in a loop because you loopy pro has also do capabilities where you can actually set for example for a number of tracks to be played in a sequence and therefore you can create a loop within that and um and this is where the colors again are really important because when uh, we'll see how to use the DOM functionality, you will see that uh, each color correspond to a track. Okay, so that is extremely important. This is where you can uh, select to record audio or your uh, OS sequence. You can configure your input and output and you can start the recording and we'll see how that uh, works very well. Down here, you have these three um, um, symbols, these dotted uh, lines. This is where you set your tempo, and these are these settings are really, really important. First of all, if you have um, three uh, little uh, lines here on top for the tempo and also on the bars, which means Loopy Pro doesn't know what tempo is referring to or how many bars in a loop we are referring to. And therefore, he has set a detection range which you will use to actually detect the tempo from, for example, a loop or a file that you imported or for something that you actually recorded. You can click tap um, several times here and it will set the tempo. And in that case, the detection range will move away. You can scroll left and right here to select something. You can click on the numbers and then enter what you like. Then you can click on this symbol here. You can divide by two, half the tempo or duplicate or double it. So let's alpha it, it goes to 60. And let's double it, it goes to back to 120. This is where you set the number of bars that you want to record because you can record indefinitely or you can also set the maximum number of bars that you record. Um, so you can go for 1, 2, 4, A, 16, 32. Then you have symbols here to double and the number of bars like so, or to half it, double it again, add one. In that case, it goes to five. You see the selection here disappear because you don't have a selection of five. And you can click also minus to go back to four. In that case, the selection of four comes back. At the bottom here, you have setting for a uh, um, metronome here to enable it on and off, and also a different metronome, which instead of being a tick, it uses uh, actually flashes on, uh, on the screen, and I will show you that shortly. You can reset the settings, and when you click on that, you can see it goes back to not having a tempo, not having the number of bars selected, and the 40 has the de detection range which you can also change as well, like so. You can change the number of bits on a bar, which is really nice in case you want to do something different than the four bits per measure. You can also force the bar duration to be constant uh, activating the switch. You have additional settings down here. This is where you can say, okay, I change uh, the way that the metronome sounds. There are four different sounds. You can enable it, disable it, you can set the volume in decibel. 
You can change the mode of operating so you can have it always on or you can have it also only on count in. And you can also set the output channel for the metronome, which is really nice, particularly if you have an audio interface. And then you have a synchronization set of options. This is where you can enable, disable able to link. You can establish additional connections, Bluetooth connection, but also you can decide what are your MIDI uh, clock source, so you can have me do a virtual in and output, and you can also set an offset in milliseconds, which uh, is really nice. Moving on, on the right hand side, you have a menu, an hamburger menu. This is where you can select to change settings at global level for all clips or settings only for uh, colors. And just to show you a little bit, you click on it and then you decide which color, and then you change the setting corresponding to that particular color. But you can also ch um, change meeting controls, and um, which will say particularly related to Bluetooth connections, you can enable disable synchronization setting for metronome, system setting, help MIDI learn, and see your Bluetooth devices which are connected. Okay, moving on at the bottom, you have this symbol here, which opens a mixer. And as you can see, it shows you strips for each of the colors and also for your input, which in this case is the iPod um, microphone and also for the output. And this is where you can add effects. So you can change destination. You can, uh, if you have an audio interface, send audio to different outputs. You can set volume, etc., etc. We'll see these in more details. You can minimize that view like so, clicking on this button, which is really nice. And this is where also you will have the ability to add uh, additional hardware input, audio unit input, MIDI, buses, etc., etc. So let's exit that. Then you have a door view. You see why it's important to actually see um, the colors because the tracks correspond to colors and you have more than one colors per track because you have different clips. So in this case, you have a clip one and six, which are orange. This is where you can copy and paste part of the loops in a sequence, which is really nice. And then if we go back again to the um, loop view, you have this button here, this pencil for edit. And if you make sure that this is selected, what you see here is the way that the screen has been designed, which is really nice. And then you can zoom out in different direction. You can add the controls, which are called widgets down here, which I will show you in one of the next tutorials. So really, really powerful. You can change, for example, colors, and you can also group items, and you can enable MIDI Learn or go to MIDI Learns here. Okay, so, um, and then I haven't mentioned these bu buttons or symbol here on the bottom right. You have this one, which allows you to add another loop. Okay, you can see a loop which continues to play sound. It is this circular. Or you can also have one shot loop like this one, which is a square, will play the sound only once. Okay, so hopefully this is enough as an introduction. Now I'll see you at the next tutorial where we start to look at how we record uh, um, audio loops and we start to go through quantization, lengths, uh, uh, master clock and all of that. Okay. See you next time. Bye.